Hey everyone, a very warm welcome to all of you to today's podcast. Today I have a guest who don't need any introduction to IIT Ajanta, but if you don't know him, I have Dr. Ek Chandravedi with us. Hey sir, welcome to podcast. Of, of, we are very delighted that you have with us today. I'm very happy to be a part of this. How are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, so sir, today we are sitting here in this Thompson building, which has uh, like his own long history uh, of 175 years. And uh, like for uh, past five, six years, you must have been coming here on a daily basis. Right. Uh, so does its beauty, like you would still admire it or you have gotten a lot of it? <laughs> no, this uh, building is quite inspirational in the sense that it reminds you of its long history. It also reminds you the kind of planning that would have gone into the construction of this building, design of this building. And so I don't think one can get enough of it. Uh, I think it is something that uh, keeps you uh, sort of very, uh, I mean, target oriented that you must do better and better. You must get good at things. Uh, you must try to promote uh, uh, good things, try to be more and more excellent at things. So you cannot get enough of it. So, like, it has a deep meaning for you, the building? Actually, if you ask me, it has a deep meaning for every member of the IIT Roorkee family. Hmm. And um, if you go on to any IIT Roorkee event or if you do a simple Google search, it is this building that comes from. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, in some ways, it is synonymous with IIT Roorkee. Yes, I mean, if, if IIT Roorkee, if you ask somebody, one thing that immediately clicks in the mind is this building. So, so it is like indistinguishable. Yes, sir. What is IIT would be in this building? So, uh, I mean, naturally, because the history started from this building, mm -hmm. so it is not surprising. But this is very uh, awe-inspiring building. It's a building that remains in your mind. So, so, so that is also all the more reason that uh, we relate to it immediately. Right. Right. Uh, so, coming to journey of yours, you have completed your graduation, masters, and PhD from IIT Kanpur. Right. So, a true IITian indeed. <laughs> um, so, uh, the journey of IITian began with JE itself. Uh -huh. So, how was JE at your time? Was it as much hyped as it is right now? Or the, the coaching scenario, was it similar to what it is right now? JE has been uh, very sort of uh, uh, very hyped up. As you are saying, yes. since since a very long time, I in fact much before I appeared in JE, it was already carrying a lot of prestige, a lot of uh, importance, and uh, it was something that students who would uh, love mathematics and physics would naturally get uh, inspired or gravitate towards it. Mm -hmm. So that way, that part of it probably has has grown a bit. I'm not saying it has not grown. Uh, but at the same time, it is it is quite similar also in that sense. Okay. Regarding the coaching culture, I would say definitely today's coaching culture is much more than what it was at that time. Mm -hmm. But at that time also, there was coaching and there was significant amount of coaching that was available. And uh, I remember correspondence coaching classes were there in okay. the sense that uh, they would send study material, and uh, the using that study material, students would prepare for the J exam. Hmm. So coaching was prevalent. It, it is not that coaching was not there. Okay. Hmm. So like you also took some sort of coaching back in your days. So actually, I did not take any coaching. But uh, what happened? One of my friends he had taken uh, one uh, popular correspondence coaching. Okay. So uh, I don't know whether it is there in today's time or not. At, during my time, it was known as uh, Agarwal coaching classes. It was not a physical coaching class. Okay. Uh, it was like uh, they would prepare course contents, they would prepare sample questions, so mm. they will give you practice questions. Mock paper. So it was not like uh, uh, somebody teaching in the class. Mm. It was not like a physical instructional class. It was purely correspondence. That means study material would come by post. Mm. It's up to you to study it or not study it. Okay. 
So one of my friends had taken it and sort of I also got to find him. Uh, right, right. So you also got to know about IIT after your tenth only, or was it something? Actually, my journey is somewhat different uh, uh, in the sense that I was uh, fascinated towards the subject of physics. Okay. So I wanted to do physics after class twelve, and so. i think somewhere around class 10 or class 11 we started exploring this question as to which will be a good institute to pursue physics mm -hmm. and my brother was studying in kanpur already in the medical college okay so i happened to uh, i mean naturally this was a conversation in the family so this came up that uh, iit kanpur does uh, offer very good course in physics mm -hmm. so during my class 11 actually i visited iit kanpur once from from lucknow i used to live in lucknow and so i visited uh, iit kanpur once mm -hmm. and uh, then it was uh, very easy to decide that uh, i think if you have to pursue physics then also j is the best mm -hmm. uh, best way to pursue it mm -hmm. so so i was not after too many coachings or i was not after the uh, per se engineering profession per se but i was more like after a academics or something to take up in the research profession the theoretical side of physics not necessarily theoretical i mean the research side of physics okay. no. teaching and research side yes sir so from then the transition happened after experiencing no transition happened actually you see i'm still like that only okay <laughs> see in the sense that i joined iit kanpur at that time lot of people said that at your rank uh, i i got uh, electrical engineering it was quite sought after at that time mm -hmm. so people said why don't you take electrical engineering and here also there is lot of overlap with physics and if you want to switch to physics you can do that so i did uh, accept the advice that was offered by lot of people mm -hmm. and i did take an admission in electrical, electrical engineering but then my life has remained the same in the sense that i still do teaching and research mm -hmm. so whether i do physics or whether i do electrical engineering as long as i am in the academic world it is something very similar so uh, like back in those days where these course like ek variety kar lo to life settle like uh, where they still prevalent in your time too uh well even now it is not prevalent <laughs> <laughs> people think that it is prevalent yes sir uh, when you do class 10 you think okay you have done everything when you do class 12 you think you have done everything when you enter je or iit you think you have done everything when you graduate from iit you think everything but till you are breathing life is still throwing challenges at you uh, opportunities at you hmm. and and you want to be ambitious you want to achieve more and more in life so so that was never true i mean neither in my time nor in during your time uh, it's just like for a short term people think like that hmm. so uh, as you said that after getting like before even before getting to iit you had an ambition of doing pursuing research as a career yes teaching and research okay so uh, mm -hmm. like doesn't your parents said any time ki are engineering karke job le le fir settle ho ja so actually i have i've been very fortunate i would say my parents have been extremely supportive mm -hmm. uh, they they would say that you have to make your choice and this is i'm talking 40 years back mm -hmm. so so my parents were ahead of their own generation so they never gave me the impression that they want me to do anything that they would like uh, mm. that would satisfy them or that would make them happy they just gave complete freedom that uh, to make what, your own choices you make your own choice uh, whatever pleases you mm. uh, normally if you are happy doing something you will be good at it mm. so so there was absolutely no pressure some maybe some extended family if you look at there were some people who had some expectations mm -hmm. that i would i should do this or that can relate to you <laughs> uh, but not immediate family there was absolutely never any pressure so I, that's what i my parents were probably ahead of their time in one on in one of your interviews you mentioned that in india most of the technologies are uh, confined in labs only and uh, like uh, the most of the uh, technologies are not uh, converted into products like they are only confined to labs only so what initiatives have you taken here at iit to ensure that such innovation uh, are not confined only to labs of itr 
See, uh, what I would have said uh, probably is that a uh, lot of technologies that are developed in the lab hmm. have the promise to come to the marketplace. Hmm. And, uh, but that journey is, is not a one step journey or a simple journey. It is a, it is a journey that has to be undertaken uh, by somebody. And we, we do not have many people who are willing to undertake that journey. Because uh, from the lab to the marketplace, uh, the journey is as tortuous as when you create something in the lab, if not more. Mm -hmm. uh, when you create a product, when you take it to the marketplace, uh, you have a sometimes or maybe many times, most times, a bigger hill to climb, a more steep hill to climb. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you have to convince the users, you have to you have to bring in the Finance, you have to bring in people, create a team, mm. uh, you have to make sure that uh, you have good marketing skills, uh, you have to make sure that uh, you have good managerial skills. Mm. So, it, it is something that is desired, but it is something that is not easy or does not come to everyone easily. Mm. So, what I have been trying to do or uh, many people who are in a position similar to mine have been trying to do is create more awareness, awareness at multiple levels. First awareness is that why this is required. Hmm. So this is required not only so that the person can earn more money, uh, it is required not only because um, it will make somebody else's life easier because the product may have some value and so because of that value, it will, it will bring some uh, convenience or some comfort to the people involved. But there are larger goals. Larger goals are that our country's economy needs to grow. Hmm. How will the country's economy grow? It will not grow unless we create more businesses. Hmm. So this journey from the lab to the market is essentially the journey of creating a business. And when you create a business, you give employment to so many people. Hmm. You strengthen the hands of the government by giving more taxes to the government. Hmm. So the, then the government can invest in many more social welfare schemes that it wants to, but its hands are tied. You might have heard about this uh, very popular phrase that has been going on for the last five, seven years, that we want to make India a $5 trillion economy. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Why this phrase? Because if the size of the economy grows, then there are many, many fruits that will follow from it. And how will the size of the economy grow? By taking products or by taking innovations, inventions from the lab to the market. That is one very strong way of increasing the size of the economy. Hmm. There are other ways also. It is not that everything has to be invented or uh, uh, researched. There are other ways of also creating business, mm -hmm. but this is one very important way uh, by which innovations can lead to the growth of the economy. So, where do you see IITR in it? Like how much we have grown? See, if you look at IIT Roorkee, so IIT Roorkee has grown tremendously. In fact, uh, as I said in the beginning, that this is more a question of making people aware that why this is required. Mm -hmm. Once people become more and more aware of it, I think many things follow and this thing will also happen. It is not something that, uh, as I said, will come easily because employment is a very easy route. I just become an employee. Mm. I take up a good job. Uh, uh, I get paid well. Me and my family are doing well. Mm. So it does not come naturally to many people. But once you increase the awareness, many things follow. So, so there are initiatives at multiple levels. For example, which is the target force? which you expect can do this. So there are two segments in IIT Roorkee. One segment is the large student population. Mm -hmm. The other segment is the faculty. So at the student population level, we have, uh, for example, created a position of General Secretary Entrepreneurship Affairs. Mm, yes, sir. The whole idea was that this will give the students more visibility to the importance and to the need for entrepreneurship. You might have seen that every Sunday you get an email. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So that email, why was it started? That email was started 
essentially to make sure that this captures the imagination of the student's mind. Hmm. Because if even 5 to 10 percent of our students get excited towards it, hmm. right, it will have a very fast rapid rate of growth. Uh, it can become an exponential rate of growth because we will get more and more role models. Yes, sir. And the more role models you get, the more uh, chances are there that more people will follow it. Yes, sir. Will follow it. Hmm. Similarly, you might have seen that uh, last one year we created a new award. In fact, one of our alumnus mm -hmm. uh, has uh, donated uh, money to create an award for the student who works most to improve the entrepreneurship culture in IIT Roorkee. Okay. So, this is the first time that award will be given. Okay. This is the first year. You already know that uh, there is a technology business incubator in the campus, Tides. Yes, sir. And Tides does several events and activities. In fact, Tides brings lots of money to the campus so that it can give seed grant, it can promote the students in taking up. In fact, not only to students, we also allow people from outside IIT Roti okay. to, to come in and incubate and to start things uh, in this direction. Uh, there are uh, uh, several other initiatives like uh, IIT Roti has a faculty entrepreneurship policy. Okay. So, so our faculty are allowed to incubate company and many faculty have come forward. Hmm. Uh, in fact, that number would be now more than 10, the faculty who have come forward and incubated their companies. Okay. And naturally, these companies are more uh, technology oriented. Uh -huh. uh, we want to promote uh, technology. And uh, these companies also have, I mean, just like any other company uh, to become big, to, to sort of grow. And uh, there, then there are some several government of India initiatives like the Technology Innovation Hub. Uh, that Divya Sampark you must have heard of yes, in, in IIT Roorkee. So, that Divya Sampark also is in the uh, business of uh, promoting uh, incubation. So, so there are several windows of opportunity uh, that IIT Roorkee offers. You might have, I mean, I'm sure you must have heard about eCell. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So, eCell is, is the full time job of eCell is that. Then they do an annual summit every year. Hmm. Uh, there is a three day event uh, that is done specifically for this purpose. So, so all these efforts are directed in this uh, to make sure that more and more of our students take up this. And in fact, uh, this is happening also. You might have heard about FAMPE. Yes, sir. Right. So, FAMPE is a, <coughs> our recent graduate. Sambhav Jain. Huh? Huh? So, so Sambhav and Kush. Yes, sir. So, so both were their students during my time only. I mean, yes, sir. Right. And, and see immediately results are there. Um, they, they are going bigger and bigger. And um, similarly, there are many other examples from senior alumni, from mid career alumni uh, who are doing it. So, there is a not only a desire, uh, I mean, it's almost uh, sure that uh, our entrepreneurship culture has, in, has improved significantly and uh, more and more students are willing to work in that direction and take up that as a profession. So, uh in terms of infrastructure, labs, I think uh, all the new new buildings are coming up. Uh, the startup culture, as you said, uh, is also growing in the campus and new thing initiatives are uh, coming up every month. Uh, and even in the QS World Ranking, as we see, we have improved this year alone uh, by 21 positions. And 31 positions. 31 positions, sorry. Uh, uh. Uh, from 400 to 369, I guess. And this is the best ever rank. Of IIT Roorkee. Of IIT Roorkee. And we also grabbed that uh, fifth position on Atal Innovation Rank. Correct. ARIA ranking. So, yeah. uh, what what factors do you think uh, are the are behind it? Right. So, uh, if you ask me what factors have contributed, maybe I we can talk for half an hour only only on that alone. <laughs> It's very difficult to pinpoint one thing. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, we are a big IIT. We are a large IIT. We are one of the old IITs. Mm. Old, large IIT. So, in a large IIT, when uh, things happen, uh, it's all a combination of various factors. Mm. Right. It's difficult to say that only one thing or two things or three things were responsible for it. Uh, first thing is we must understand that it, there has to be an institutional desire hmm. to aspire for more, hmm. right? And I can see that that is there. The, the students, the faculty, they are all hungry for success. They all uh, want that uh, 
they deserve to be at a higher pedestal and, and they are willing to work in that direction. The institute of course provides its catalyst uh, that how we can catalyze this, how we can uh, tap into this desire uh, to convert into, into results. Mm -hmm. So many policy decisions happen, some happen at the senate level, uh, some happen at the board level, some happen at the level of the director. Uh, but essentially, if you ask me, if I have to summarize, so I think the few things that are, uh, that have, have contributed in this direction is that we have tried to make our institute accept that every stakeholder has a role to play. As in students and faculty? Yes. Even non-teaching staff. Of course. Even non-teaching staff. So it is not that uh, only with the effort of faculty or only with the effort of students or only with the effort of non-teaching staff or only with the effort of the director, things can change or things can improve. Mm -hmm. So if we think that every stakeholder is important, then we must care for every stakeholder. We must care for the students. Mm -hmm. We must care for the faculty. We must care for the non-teaching staff. In the journey of growth, there are many pains. Whenever we grow, there are pains also. Hmm. Now, those pains have to be adequately addressed, uh, whether it is for the students, whether it is for the faculty, all the stakeholders. Second thing I would say is that there should not be any need to say that faculty is more important or, or, or students are more important. So, there should not be any hierarchy in that sense. No comparison of stakeholders. No, no hierarchy. I mean, both are equally important. Mm -hmm. Right? If you, if you can address the concerns, if you can make their, uh, if you can make them uh, feel more a part of the institute, mm -hmm. they will be going the extra mile to work for the institute. Mm -hmm. So, everybody has to be, <coughs> has to feel that he, he, he or she is, uh, is responsible. For, for the betterment of the institute hmm. and has a role to play. So, whether it is sports, look at our sports, look at our uh, inter-IT tech competition. So, inter-IT tech competition, just two years back, we were, we got the first rank. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right? So, I mean, it is the effort of a group of maybe 200, 300, 400 students. Yes, sir. But every such glory shows to everybody else that what we are capable of. Mm -hmm. And then if you are, if you know that you are capable for more, it is not difficult for you to become more ambitious. More hungry. More hungry. So it is just create the hunger. I mean, uh, also make sure that everybody uh, feels that he or she is important for the system. And then the system, in, I'm talking about a large IIT. Yes, sir. Right. So, and then the, naturally the stakeholders reward the institute. Like they have done. Like they have done. And hopefully they will continue to do that in future also. Uh, so, uh, what things, like, do you feel that uh, they are still there and we have to work upon them as well? See, first thing we have to realize is that in today's competitive world, even retaining the rank is a very difficult job. Hmm. Right. So, it is not something that, okay, this year we have to work hard and then from next year we, we can go to sleep. Yes, sir. So, this is a never ending journey. Hmm. Any time any institute becomes a slack, that institute is going to slip. In fact, as I said, even if you work very hard, even if you give your best, your rank may still be very difficult to retain because everybody else is competing. So, hmm. it is like a competition. So, so this, this, this thing is never going to end. I mean, it is not that, okay, we have to do these three more things or four more things. But this more important thing is the direction. Hmm. So, the direction that we have taken is that everybody needs to realize his or her potential. That direction is important. And that direction will continue to propel the future growth of the institute.